Growing up, I never really had a friend group, that one that everyone else seemed to have. It felt like I was always on the outskirts of things, clinging on but never quite attaching properly, easily discarded, grasping at something that slipped through my fingers. What this meant was that I lived with a constant doomsday mindset, always ready to sever ties before they could be severed first. As I grew older, I left behind a trail of broken friendships, casualties of a battle I waged against my mind. But this is not a story about ex-friends, but about some pain, self-discovery, and the growth that comes from embracing the complexities of human connection. Guys, let's talk about friendships. A very sore spot for me. I feel like now that I'm entering my 30s, it is the best time to, you know, do better, be better. No more excuses. I feel like for the most part of my life, um, I've had, like, friendships have always been my Achilles heel. I've had so many problems. And now I've got to, I feel like I've gotten to a stage, to an age where, you know, there's no more blaming trauma. There's no more blaming, you know, um, trauma response. It's now taking accountability and doing better. And this is not even me um, trying to downplay the role that trauma plays because <laughs> honestly, if anybody has an experience with this, I do. I do. <laughs> but also, I just know that at some point in life, you know, you can't just be saying, oh, because of this, that's why I'm like this. At some point, you have to like sit yourself down and be like, girl, this is not working. If you want to get this, if you want to do this, you know, you have to do better. And I mean, what better time? I mean, yeah, my 20s would have been a better time, but <laughs> that is in the past now. Um, I mentioned a new year. So let's talk about friendships for a bit. I think that for the most part of my, I don't think that I know, for the most part of my life, I have, I have lived a very lonely existence. And man, I struggled. I struggled for so long. And sometimes I try to sit down and think about the root of all of these things. And <laughs> I think about it and I realized that right from when I was like in GSS2, I was, I was really young. I got into I got into secondary school like nine years old or something. I realized that it has actually been a pattern for me. And so for the longest time I used to feel like there was something wrong with me. That like I was I was a problem and because of me, like my friendships couldn't last. That there was something there was something fundamentally wrong with me. There was something that I always used to do that I was just wrong. Man, <laughs> I can't even, honestly, I don't even think a video is enough to talk about this. And so, if you follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, you would know that I am a very expressive person. When I have, when I find like a new friend or something, or someone that I connect deeply with, and I, sh I talk about them, I share them on my Insta story, you know, but then people would notice that after a while, you know, <laughs> they would stop seeing that person on my Insta story. And I've actually got a couple of questions. People would ask me, oh, what happened to this person? Or, or they'd be like, oh, well, you are always changing friends or something like that. And and I would just sit down and blame myself and I'll be like, yeah, that's just because you are the problem. There's something fundamentally wrong with you. You are a bad person. For the, the first time I ever tried therapy, I tried therapy for a bit. And that was something that the therapist helped me work through, you know, me thinking that I'm a bad person and that uh, nothing good. I, I would never like have fulfilling friendships because of it. Man, this is such a sore spot for me, you guys. I really hope that I can do better this new year. So, sometimes I think about my life, I think about I don't remember a lot of things, but obviously I would remember things that made me feel a certain type of way or made me feel deeply. And sometimes I'll think about the years of my life 
in relation to people, you know. Um, for example, I think about when I was in secondary school, in like my final SS Tessis Street, I think about it in relation to a friend I used to have back then, Natasha Ada. <laughs> I think about it in relation to her, I think about it in relation to some of the classmates I used to have. And it felt like for the longest time, I was always trying to fit in. I was always trying to like, be a part of, you know, a friendship group. I remember when I went, when I moved to uni, there was something that happened as well. And so, because of this, I kind of, I guess formed a, protective mechanism in the sense that before people would leave me or before people would um, so that I don't feel bad about anything if it doesn't play out the way that I want I would often leave people first and now that I think about it, it was terrible so like I would literally just wake up when I start to feel like, oh my God, this person isn't responding to me in the way that I want them to respond. And I think, oh my God, maybe they've gotten tired of me. And so I will just block them. Literally, I will just block them. I don't know, there's just something in my head. It's like, it's okay, you can do it. Just block them and move on with your life, it's fine. I would be in like so much pain. And I guess these people would think that they, for me to, <laughs> I didn't realize that blocking people were such a deep thing that people would take so, you know, but <laughs> now I do realize that, but then people would take it so personally and they would be like, how would you block me? And you know, things would just fall out just like that. And in my head, it's just like, you know, I'm just doing this thing to protect myself. And I would sit down and feel like, yeah, I mean, whatever i'm fine i'm good and sometimes i actually see it in i see some of these things play out even like recently so sometimes when i have an argument with my husband um and i know that he may want to take some space and because i know that i would feel bad because of this i'm like yeah it's fine if you want to take some space so this is me already saying whatever i'm fine i don't care you know where was I? And I remember in uni, in uni, during my first few years in uni, I had a couple of friends and we had this back and forth cycle. And when I graduated uni, um, I had a couple of friends and we would go out together. Um, I, I would go to their house, to their house, and we would just hang out all the time and it was nice. And when that sort of disintegrated, you know, I started blaming myself again. But then after a while, I realized that someone actually told me, the person was like, yes, okay, yes, you may have bad behavior, right? You may, your bad behavior may just be that, okay, sometimes you just pull out before you, know, you feel yourself getting hurt. But then also friendship is a two-way street, right? So it's grace, grace giving, grace taking, and, um, you can't always just blame yourself for something. You know, personally, yeah, I think about it even till date. Sometimes I think about it and I think, hmm, I wonder what some of my friends would say about me. Right, okay, so maybe this person would say that, oh, she was so full of herself. She would always say, oh, why weren't, I felt like you guys weren't there for me. But one thing I know is that I don't think that anybody would ever say that Cassandra was vile or she was um, a toxic person or a toxic friend. That's, when I, that's one thing I hold as a consolation to myself. I'm actually not a bad person, I'm a good person. But sometimes, you know, I do things that may be hurtful for people because I do not want to be hurt. So like I block people sometimes or I take space or just go quiet. And I realize that these are not things that you should do to people that you claim to love. But that's why I'm here, I can take all responsibility for my parts. But then also, they made me realize that people should also, like it's a two-way thing, you know, relationships are a two-way thing. I think that me growing in my faith as a Christian and reading my Bible, I realized that love is not just like, I love this person. <laughs> it's actually so hard for me. 
you know what I said about you feel like you're entering a new age and you're meant to be like wiser, older but the truth is that what hurts you hurts you regardless of what age you are you know sometimes I think about all these things and I think about the fact that okay yes I did I blocked this person oh yes I felt bad and I kind of stayed away and I think why didn't these people like ever care enough to reach out to try and the truth is that like I, my memory isn't so great I forget a lot of things I don't even know if it's like a protective thing for me I forget a lot of things so I don't want to say something so I'm, I'm, I'm really trying like I don't even this video I don't even want to like cast any blame on anybody or anything so I don't want to say anything that somebody would watch and be like no you're lying or anything like that so I'm, I'm really trying to be careful so these are some of the emotions that I feel like even to date I think about some things and I'm like well why didn't they try and that this is this comes to play when I talk about like me growing in my faith being a better Christian and realizing what love actually means like what the Bible what God like asks us oh Jesus is that correct and what God actually expects of us when we say we love somebody and it is it is it is very <laughs> it is a very selfless thing it is regardless of self it is saying I would stick with this person regardless of this it is not saying that I give them permission to hurt me or to be this it is saying that I would give them grace I would show up you know and it's something that I'm still learning personally but sometimes I think about these things and I think about how I'm not a bad person I would not gossip about you I would not like call you names I would not do any of that so I think oh man I don't even know why I'm making this video <laughs> I don't know why I'm making this video but I guess um if you're like me if you have had like a tough run with like friends and friendships I guess this is me saying that you're not alone, you know. Um, if you're someone who like tries to protect yourself, um, tries to protect yourself from getting hurt by like pulling away, you're not alone. But it's also me saying that that can be an excuse for so long, you know. For the longest time in my life, like all I really just wanted was friends. I just wanted to have people. Like for so long in my life, I felt so alone. You know, like I, I, I can think back to a stretch, like I can think back to a period in my life and I would just remember, like the emotion would just like just me feeling alone. And so for the longest time, felt like people would never stick around and that I was going to do like honestly I'm <laughs> sometimes I'm just like oh my well, god really loves me I didn't see myself getting married anytime soon you know sometimes like literally when I think when I used to think about the future I would just see myself being alone like for the longest time that was the predominant feeling that I had I felt like literally all I just wanted was like people but somehow I was never good enough somehow I would always ruin things <laughs> you know and I guess I know that turning 30 doesn't really change much I think that I have gotten to a space where 
I no longer yearn so much for these things. I mean, it would be nice. It would be nice. I would love to. I would never say no to friends, you know. But I've gone to a space where I no longer yearn like so much for these things. You know, I've gone to a space where, honestly, I'm not. I wouldn't say that I am 100% like healed or anything. I don't think. I don't think you ever just get healed. I think it's a journey, you know. But. I've, I've sort of like rested in God's love, you know. It's been a long, I'm, I'm turning 13, guys. So just imagine like 29, well, I wouldn't say 29 years because obviously there were like the younger, the younger years that would that I wouldn't quite count, but. <laughs> Sometimes I make videos and I'm like, I don't even know what the point of this video is. I honestly do not know. But uh, I guess turning a new age, um, turning this milestone age, like I said, I've been doing a lot of reflections lately. And honestly, now God, 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 God is so good. God really helps. God really, really, really helps. Honestly, if you're not a Christian, uh, I don't know. I don't know how people do it, but the fact that I am here at this point in my life, celebrating 30, honestly, it's, it's God. It's it's God. And so I was thinking about friendships, and I guess I'm just I'm at this place where I'm kind of comfortable now. So much has happened. Two years ago, um, I don't even know if it was two years ago. It was recent though. It was during the pandemic, 2020. It was towards the end. It was like tw end of 2020, end, end of 2020, beginning of 2021. So I had this friend who I, who I actually loved so dearly, bro. I don't, <laughs> you know how. So I had this friend who I loved so dearly. And so somehow we, we fell apart. And honestly, I feel like <laughs> I feel like it was such a shitty period in my life, you know. Man, I've had such a I've had such a r r long and wrong run with like friendships. So I guess I'm just saying with this video that if. You've ever felt this way, you've ever felt like alone and like you never fit in and like um, you would never be good enough, people would always leave you or like you're a bad person, you never do, you would, your friendships or your relationships would never last. I want to say that I get it, I get the feeling to be very honest, but be easy on yourself, you know. I wish someone told me this back then, be easy on yourself. It took a while before I started having conversations like this. I met someone off Twitter. Um, I can't remember Twitter something. I can't really remember. But this person responded to me. He replied, but he sent me a DM, and then we started talking. I feel like that is the most wholesome friendship I've had all of my life. Um, Paul. He he lives, he's Nigerian. He lives in Ghana. I feel like man. He honestly, when I say God looks out for me, <laughs> when I say God is so intentional. Like He loves us so much. Because I believe that he, he was the one that like sent this person into my life. Because of this person, a lot of the things I thought, a lot of the negative like mindset and views I had about myself, about re my relationships, it really changed. This was the same person that taught me to be easy on myself, that taught me that friendship is in two way street. Sometimes I would mess up, but this person would always reach out. He would send me emails, he would tell me, you're my friend and I will be here for you. I don't like this thing that you did, but it doesn't mean that I would hate you or it doesn't mean that I would leave you. It doesn't mean that I also am giving you leeway to not treat me right. No, there is no excuse for that, but I love you and I will stay. You know, and this taught me a lot about giving grace, receiving grace, Giving myself grace, forgiving myself also. See, um, for me, my 
I would say that I do not, I did not, I don't even know if I still, still do know, I did not know a lot about how to show love, you know, growing up. I didn't, I really did not know a lot about it. I'm not an, I have never, well, I, I am an emotional person, but like, I'm not an emotional person. I'm not an expressive emotional person. You know, there are people that, oh my God, I love you. I never used, like it took me a long while for me to actually be able to say I love you to somebody else. And so I've had like friends, friends, and even though we don't speak or like we don't talk anymore, I had a friend who taught me, like, literally, I learned to be, um, I learned to be a better friend because of this person. So many things, so many things, like, I learned that, love can heal, though. love will heal you, I know people say that nobody can heal, nobody can, um, Love, love wouldn't heal you, people wouldn't heal you, but now nah, I beg to disagree because people can love you in a way that you, 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 you start to heal, you start to get that courage to, you know, walk down the path and see what the problems are and like how you will change. So I've had people teach me how to be a more loving person. And so when I look back at my friendships in my 20s you know it's been a long string of friends coming and going friends coming and going yeah obviously some there yeah, i still have people that have stuck around but i don't think that i'm at a point where i can say that oh my god i have a if there's something wrong with me now i have people that i would message and you can talk through it but i'm also at the point where it doesn't really matter so much you know I would like to, yes, but I'm no longer like, oh my God, I really want this. I don't know if that's a good place to be. I don't know if that's a bad place to be. Um, but some of the lessons I've learned in my trainings from about friendships, it is, one, it's okay. It's okay to want like, um, to be a part of a friend group. It's okay to want like people to lean on. It's, it's fine. Love doesn't, Wanting these things doesn't weaken you, it doesn't make you a weak person. Two, so, it has also taught me that I should give myself grace. You know, give yourself grace, forgive yourself. You can never, we can never be 100% perfect. But the truth is that we can always sit, reflect, and think about where we are our own problems in our lives, you know, and it's something I try to do. Although you can, I, I did it so much that I just started like piling all the problems on myself. I am not good, I'm bad. Anything that goes wrong is my fault. No, no, give yourself grace, forgive yourself. I've gotten to a stage where I think about some of these things, some of these people that have left my life and I'm just like, it's fine, it's fine. Maybe you could have communicated in a better way. Yes. You see that. You see that now. You know that now. It's fine. Give yourself grace. It's okay. You're a human. You make mistakes. It's fine. You're not a bad person. You know, I would sit down and tell myself this thing. You're not a bad person. You know, there is good. You are good. You are good. You are good enough. It doesn't matter who picks you or who doesn't pick you. You are loved. You know, it has also taught me that you can always, you can always grow into, into, you can always grow, generally. For example, um, like I said, I wasn't someone that, I wasn't an outlook, outwardly emotional person. I wouldn't like hug people randomly. I, like literally, if someone comes to me, I'm really like, I don't say I love you, but, I met some people who really like changed the way that I express and then it taught me to to be loving. <laughs> I had my friend would come and sit with me, she'd say, um, I don't know how to help you, but I'll sit with you. You know, and it taught me how to do this kind of things to other people. So you can grow, you can learn. And I guess that's another thing. You know, I'm, 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 I'm turning 30 and I haven't really hacked 
um, making friends. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And then sometimes it feels like everyone out there has like a group of people and you're just on your lonesome, your lonesome self. It's okay. It's okay. I also know that God gives good gifts. I know that I can pray about these things. I know not to feel ashamed for wanting these things. And I guess I hope that as I enter my 30s, I know nothing will change if I do not do things differently. So, in some sort of way, I'm actually glad that I am no longer so... Oh, please, why? So, because I kind of chill. <sighs> I don't know how people make friends these days, but... Jesus, yeah. Hey. I trust God, basically. Honestly, I trust God. And I think that I've also got into a stage where I, I now realize the kind of people that I actually even want around me. You know, it's like, when I say kind of people I want around me, I want people that would show grace, that would give me grace, you know. People that would call me out with love. You know, I know, honestly, one thing I always say is, I don't even blame people so much. I had a friend that didn't come to my wedding, and one time I was like hyping her, and my sister, my husband was like, she didn't come to our wedding, and she didn't let she didn't let us know that she wasn't coming. And just like, see, it's fine. Nobody is perfect. Everybody will have one come out, the other, so it's fine. So I'm even me myself. Like I'm not expecting like perfection from anybody. <sighs> so I guess talking about friendships, talking about. Stepping into this new year, this new decade, whatever, my expectations. I guess it is, my 20s have been like a, a healing journey, you know, and I, I guess my hope is that I get to perfect this healing, to keep learning, um, keep making room for love in my heart, keep making room for people, keep... But I said, I don't think that I would say that I'm a great friend. Like I said, I, I picked up a lot of things from other people loving me, right? So, a lot of times, like, I'm not the kind of person that would just, like, call and catch up. But these are things that you have to do. So, I'm hoping that this new decade, I get to meet people that would love me wholly, that would show me grace, that would teach me to love better people that I would also um, give grace, learn, grow, pray, worship together. And if it doesn't happen, it's fine, it's good. All is well and good, I trust God. I think that that is just it. At the end of things, I just, you know, I just trust God. So I don't know, I guess you guys, let me know your experience with friendships. Let me know if you, um, can relate to any of the things. If you can't, it's fine. Um, let me know if you have any advice for me, you know, going into this new year. I keep saying going into this new year, but yeah, 30 is actually a big deal. My goodness, I can't believe I'm 30. I'm turning 30. I'm, actually, I'm practically 30. I mean, it's in a few days. So yes, guys, um, I guess this is the end of me talking about this. I feel like if I keep going, I'll just start bawling. I'll still start crying here. Um, which, like I said, you know, you never really heal completely. At some point in my life, I had like pen pals. <laughs> it was it was really good. So people that I would just talk about things with, I never met them before, and it was actually very liberating. So maybe something I'll try this this year. Maybe something I'll try. But the good thing about being married is that you get to have like a friend companion all in one. So. Yeah, I know people would be like, yeah, your, your, your spouse can't be everything to you. Yes, I totally agree, but I'm grateful that God has given me somebody to uphold me, you know. <sighs> it gets better. It gets better. God is good all the time. In the valley, highs, lows, is good. He loves you, he loves me, he loves us, he is so mindful of us. He doesn't want us to suffer. He wants us to be happy, to be filled with joy, to live, to love as hard as we can. And I know, I know, I know that if I lose everything, 
and I've, I have his love. And it is hard, to be honest. It is hard when you feel alone in the physical. So be like, it's okay. I have, I have God. It is hard, but 